Welcome to the Dragon's Den, the place where aspiring entrepreneurs with ideas to get the nation saving face experienced financial heavyweights who have cash to invest. Coming up in tonight's show. These are the Dragons. Wealthy, well-connected, innovative and influential. Today, they will make or break the dreams of three budding entrepreneurs. In the Den, Trustee Chair Steve Delo from Pan Governance, Director of Policy and Market Engagement, Darren Philp from BNCE. Chief Executive, Bill Galvin from USS. And Editor and Associate Publisher, Maggie Williams from Reward. The Dragons Woo! have the connections, the contacts, the commitment, and the cash ready to invest. But only in the best ideas to encourage people to save more for retirement. To face the Dragons, takes nerve and vision, but which of these entrepreneurs will walk away with their money? So each contestant has three minutes to pitch their idea to the dragons. They'll then question them closely, looking for any holes in their business plans. As the fifth dragon, you, the audience, will have a chance to vote on how much money, if any, you want to give to our entre entrepreneurs. Then our onstage dragons will do the same. At the very end, we'll count up all the investments and declare a winner. Entrepreneur Lucy Ashton is first up. She's hoping that her save as you spend idea will appeal to the dragon's frugal natures. But will she be able to save the day with her pitch? Let's find out. Well, hello. Um, thank, you for, thank you for having me here. Um, my idea is to help people save when they spend. At the moment, it's not easy enough to pay into a pension. I've tried. I've tried. There's much paperwork to go through. You've got to find details. You get sent information when you've even succeeded to do that. Do you really want to top up? Do, are you sure? Do you want to call, call off? Um, but it's easy to spend. I'd like to combine the two, to two so that you can save while you spend. We've got a consumer culture at the moment. Let's harness it. Let's use this consumer culture. Why not, every time you buy a small discretional item, a coffee, for example, you use your card, and every time you use that card, you also top up into your pension. You, every time you... It could be every time you, you have a transaction, you pay two pounds into your pension. Every time it's 10% into your pension. There's, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but every time you, as a consumer, are out there spending on your card, you're also thinking and getting more into the, consumer, into the saving habit and paying into your pension. It becomes more of a savings culture and a consumer culture. Why not do the two? Instead of Instead of um, asking people to forgo their coffee today and pay into their pension and not and pay into their pension today, let's do the let's do the same. Let's do the do the same all both at the same time. So instead of saying to people, have your coffee, have your ha only have your cake now or and on and and forgo your pension later, I'm saying to people, have your cake now and. Put, put your money into your pension. Have your cake and eat it. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so this is pretty much what I was just trying to explain. Every time you use your credit card or debit card or contactless card, you can pay a small amount of that pension, of that payment into your pension. It becomes more of your everyday life and more into the culture. It becomes more ingrained. Lots of people use credit cards and debit cards. Why not pay a small amount, every discretional item, um, you, can, you can decide how you do it, what the maximum is per, per transaction. It's easy. It can, it can really happen. Um, how are we going to do this? Well, we need a collaborative conversation between pension providers and card payment systems. Um, and together, if we want this to happen, it can really happen. Um, the technology's there. The pension providers have, have got the pension plans. Let's link the two together, get those things sorted, and every time... Um, you can see via your bank statement, the consumer can see via their bank statement or, or credit card statement or pension statement, obviously that's only annually, but um, they can see that they're actually starting to top up their pension. 
It could also be via the employer at auto-enrolment um, when people start their pension scheme, and you can just provide their bank details. Um, as I said before, there are different options um, for topping up. Those can be decided later. We can, we can come into all kinds of... There's all sorts of ways um, and wherefores, but basically it's linking those two. Um, the now, help looking after yourself now, but thinking about your future as well. So um, I think this, can, this is an idea that can help everyone. It can help the pension provider, it can help the card providers. More importantly, it can help the consumer. Um, they can start to pay more into their pension, and these additional top-ups can really make a difference. Um, some people's coffee habits, for example, um, are around £500 a year. Even if it's, even if it's just a cup of coffee um, mi being matched to your pension, that could make a big di difference to people's um, saving ov over time. It can help society, obviously, because people don't fall into the trap of having not enough to, to fall back on in their retirement. And, obviously, um, there are better benefits for engagement between um, pension providers and um, card technology companies, um, and there's all sorts of commercial benefits for those too. So I think it's a win-win situation for everybody. I think that conversation needs to start to happen, and consumers um, can really benefit. Um, so that's the idea. An ambitious entrepreneur, but a pitch that's not yet set the den on fire. Can Lucy Ashton, who is paying for, playing for a maximum investment of £2.5 million, win Steve Delo around? Lucy, interesting. You know, clearly, we've got to encourage saving in a more proactive way, but how are we going to make money out of this, and how are we going to get retailers excited about effectively putting in place a system where members can start to save when they're paying, as opposed to the WH Smith thing, you go in there and you buy, and then you're offered chocolate you don't want. Now we're going to have a pension we're not going to want. Um, I think, um, I, I, let's say WH Smith, let's say a retailer, They're, a lot of their transactions are coming through cards. Um, so if people are, um, they're looking after their customers by in, getting involved in this scheme, they are thinking, they're, they're looking after the well-being of their customer. Now, I think that's a really good thing for any customer. It's a good sort of corporate corporate social responsibility type thing that I think most companies need to sort of start to think about. You're really thinking about society, so putting something back in because people um, need to think about their retirement and um, not being a drag on society and putting into their pension. So they're helping on that front. Um, they're helping people to make things easier. Why not link your, your spending today with saving for tomorrow? It could really help. I think retailers could really benefit from it, from a reputational and from a commercial point of view. And, and, and actually, I think if I was going into WH Smith and every purchase, I was thinking, actually, um, I'm actually contributing to my later life as well. I'd, I'd probably have a bit of a feel-good factor, and I think I'd be quite pleased um, about the... Uh, Spending, which is a bit sinful, and the saving, which has got a bit of a halo glow with it. A good answer, but Darren Philp looks like he has another issue. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice idea and a great pitch. Um, but isn't this already out there at the moment? When I um, go and get my Domino's pizza on a Friday night, there's a little button there that says donate the balance up to the nearest pound to charity. You know, um, you know that, that's, that's doing good. Um, we have store cards, we have nectar cards, that type of thing. You've still got to crack the, you know, the, the current consumption issue versus the, the long-term you know, mm -hmm. benefits of saving. How do you get that message across? Um, well, the two things, really. There's a sort of... I think the, the, the button thing is a bit less default than I think this should be. I think, ultimately, this system should be almost a... It just happens. You set it up once, and, it, and you don't really need to think about it twice although it's, it's getting into the culture because you see it in your statement and you, you start to realise that actually your, your discretionary payments mount up over time and actually it's really good to match them in, in, in your pension. Um, so probably, obviously, it would be good to do some consumer research into you know, what, what people do and tend to do, but when it's an option of, of opting out, I think on that button you'd probably say no. Um, each time because you think, oh, that's, that's, I, I've only come to Domino's Pizzas because it's a bargain. So you might, you might not think, I, I don't know, you might not be wanting to do that. I personally probably wouldn't. But if it's more of a default, 
system. And those um, two systems are set up. I think it can just happen, and it just happens naturally. And um, people are, are also more in control, and they can sort of know exactly that every transaction is a pound, two pounds, whatever they decide, um, depending on their level of income and what they've got to spend. And finally, Dragon Maggie Williams has been in publishing longer than anyone can remember. What will she make of this scheme? Well, it's a condition of that that I am a bit of a caffeine fiend and therefore I've got a wonderful retirement ahead of me, mm. according to the, the principles of your, uh, your idea. So if you did, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying, but if you did get investment from the Dragons today, what was the, what's the first thing you'd do with it? Well, I think the first thing is to have that conversation. Get those, get those people together that can make this happen. Get the pension providers to realise this massive opportunity. This was an opportunity that sort of pinged through via email from Pensions Insight. I actually think this could actually work. Um, and I'm actually quite excited about this sort of really happening in reality. So the first thing I'd really want to do is have a conversation between um, the pension providers and the card payment systems, maybe the Association of Card Payments thingy, whatever they're called, Payments Council, the ABI, um, all sorts of people could, could have a conversation, banking technology people, the BBA, and of course the FCA, to make sure there's no sort of um, regulations in the way, and we can clear that path, have that conversation. If, it want, if, it, if we want this to happen, it can happen. I just think that conversation needs to happen. And so that's what I'd be doing, getting, getting on the phone and um, getting the right people together to make it happen. Uh, yes, but ultimately you're going to want some money to make Great. it happen. Great. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Right. As our fifth dragon, it's time for you, the audience, to cast your vote. Do you think Lucy's idea is worth an investment of your hard-earned cash? If you want to make a small investment in Lucy's idea, click A for £100,000. If you want to make a medium-sized investment in Lucy's idea, click B for £200,000. If you want to invest the total amount of money you can, select C, £500,000. Or if you're not very, very impressed, click D. I'm out. You have 10 seconds. Wonderful, thank you. The results won't be revealed now, they'll be revealed at the end. Um, unlike the audience, our dragons on stage have a finite amount of money next to them. Are you going to invest in this scheme or do you want to save your money for future investments? Bill Galvin. I think, Lucy, um, it's a good idea. I think, though, pensions are a pre-consumption discussion. I don't want to plug up the checkout at Sainsbury's with people trying to figure out their marginal tax rate and their lifetime allowance. <laughs> so I think that um, I, 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 I find it difficult. But I do think it might work in an ISA context. So if you want to explore it in that space, I'll go with an exploratory 100K. Steve Delo. Well, I think there's a germ of an idea there, Lucy, and I think you're very credible and could lead this business. Um, I'm very concerned about the regulatory aspects because every time we have a good idea in pensions, we have about <laughs> 40 pages of paper we have to fill out every time we do something. But if we can get through the regulatory aspects, the thing that attracts me most of all is taking on WH Smith and those big bags of Haribos and dairy milk that they keep <laughs> offering you, and we'll put a better, more wholesome, retirement-orientated solution on the shelves for people when they check out. So I am going to give you £200,000. Maggie Williams. Yeah, well, I also definitely agree that there's a germ of an idea there, and I like the idea of linking the consumption now with the saving for the future. And on that basis, I'm also going to invest £200,000. And last but not least, Darren Phelps. Will I, will I buck the trend? Um, great idea. We need to make it easier for people to save more and um, you know, increase saving in this country. I think um, you know, there are regulatory barriers, as Steve says, um, but I'm in on this one, and I'll give you 150 grand. So, some good news for Lucy, who's definitely walking away with some of our dragon's money, but it's all still to play for with the results of our fifth dragon, the audience 
to be revealed and also two more entrepreneurs to come up. There's no such thing as a typical entrepreneur. And, as the dragons are soon to find out, the next contestant proves that the den is always full of surprises. But will Sir Hill Sethi be more like a surprise party or a nasty shock with his revolutionary savings idea? Please welcome Sir Hill Sethi to the floor. Good evening, dragons. Good evening, audience. The reason I'm here today is because I believe that most people would like to save a lot more than they currently do, but they, but they find it difficult because they get uh, distracted by what happens in daily life. So I'm here to pitch for 100,000 pounds only for an idea that aims to help people manage their money better and uses the power of suggestion to increase their savings, including savings for retirement. My idea is about the creation of a service provider, an entity that can govern everything a person can spend money on. It... Oh. Oh. Okay. It aims to track everything a person can... Oh. Oh. Something's happening. I'll just get back to you. I'll just talk. What it aims to do is... Uh, track all the financial transactions of an individual, and negotiate the best deals from insurance companies, banks, and utility providers. And what it, but it also has the power to change them if required. What it also does is... Keep going. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> it also helps people make and keep on top of their goals by suggesting sensible budgets for them and feeding back the status of their accounts in real time. If someone is behind their target, it suggests corrective actions that they can take to move back on track, like simple actions like skipping the morning coffee, suggesting supermarkets that fit the weekly budget of their shopping, or even suggesting that they don't go out and stay in for the night and watch a movie instead. Importantly, it makes saving fun by integrating it with their daily lives, like moving money into savings in their savings account, depending on how many likes they get on Facebook or how many tweets they send. Rewarding people who meet their targets with bonus interest, employer matches, anything that helps them reach their goals quicker, and thereby solidifying the savings habit. So how will it survive? It will make money. <laughs> it will make money by charging employers for running their benefits package. It will make money by charging subscriptions to the 5 million self-employed people who have nowhere near the fiduciary oversight that me, people like me who have jobs enjoy. And it will make money by using the power of data that it will collect on a daily basis. And if you think that all this is, uh, this is castles in there, I would like to add that a lot of this is really reality. There are companies out there who are tracking financial transactions and helping people budget better. Employers are offering a very similar service to the service provider when they go out and create a flex benefits package for the employees and choose the pension provider, they choose the life insurance provider, they choose the private health insurance provider. And there are sites out there that are using the power of collective auctions to give better deals on utilities to their members. All that is required is to bring all this together and with your support I plan to do exactly that. Thank you. Thank you, Sahil, and, a, and it's very difficult to pitch without one's presentation, so well done. Um, oh. <laughs> will, Sahil, will Sahil capture the judges' hearts, minds, and most importantly, cash? Bill Galvin, what do you think? Sahil, I'm going to invest in you just for making you sit through that and pitch through that <laughs> and disruption. But look, I mean, you've crossed, as far as I can see, the money advice service with money supermarket, an IFA, a retail banking platform, and household budgeting. I'm tempted to ask at what point you invade Poland, you know, <laughs> how, how, isn't this just too big? Um, you're trying to eat a lot of people's lunch here. How, how is it all going to work with all of the other people out in, in, in these various spaces? Uh, the way I see it, I, I don't see it as eating people's lunch. <laughs> I see it as more of a collaborative effort with <clears throat> flex benefits providers and these companies that uh, have tracking software. If I can bring them all together on a single platform, I think we can create a much more holistic solution. And, and let, 
compared to what it is today where people have only seen, bits, seen the solution in bits and bits. So a lack of potential plan to bring some of the service providers has left some of the dragons puzzled. Darren Philp. I think my first comment is, um, you know, moneysuperman.com <coughs> is at Steve Dilo. Um, yeah. I think, um, you know, I really like the aggregator. Cheap joke, cheap joke. <laughs> um, really like the aggregator approach. You know, I think, um, you know, where we're going in society is, you know, the, the need for people to see all their information in, in one place. So really supportive of that. I think you can make it fun. I think you can make it engagement, engaging. Um, you know, my big question now is around governance and ownership. You know, Bill, Bill said um, you mm. risk um, eating people's lunches. You know, is this a not-for-profit? In which case, why would I invest? Yeah. Um, is it a government? Well, why can't the government just fund it? You know, if it's a provider, well, as a provider, I'd love to own this because it's a, it's a massive data. So how do you crack that governance challenge? I guess uh, that question is very similar to what we are facing in the pension industry with the rise of master trusts. There are providers who aim to provide a better governance to pensions, in the same, and, but, still, but still, they need to survive in this world. Some of them may be not profit, but some of them may, it may charge the member for that service. So I do not see this as a not-profit organization. I see it for a profit organization, but by helping people save more, it, what, will, what we will charge members to offer this service will be far less than what I think that in the long-term impact on the finances will be. Maggie Williams, you look like something's puzzling you. Mm, yeah, well, my first piece of advice for free is don't build it in PowerPoint. I think that's a good start. Um, but what I would say, that, again, my, I think my, my, my question links into Darren's, really, which is about ongoing governance afterwards. You've got an awful lot of people's data, an awful lot of information about their bank accounts, the whole Big Brother stuff in there. It, that's potentially a, a, a massive risk area. How, how are you going to minimise that risk? I think we'll spend a lot of money on IT security. It will have the same level of security that your bank accounts have today, which is online security, and a lot of us are very comfortable going into our bank accounts, even on our phones, and looking at our bank data or even paying through that. So it's the same level of security that I'll employ. Your second question is the security of data and how people might react to a provider using their data. So I would like to offer a service where people have the choice of taking part in this data exercise or not. And if they don't take part in this data exercise, then I would probably charge them a little bit extra for offering that service. Great, thank you, Sahil. Great. Thank you. Audience, it's time for you as our fifth dragon to decide how much you would like to invest in Sahil's idea. Once again, small investment, £100,000, press A, medium, press B, the full amount, press C, or if you're out, press D. You have 10 seconds. Our on-stage dragons have had time to deli deliberate, and I'm interested to see how much Maggie Williams is going to invest, if anything. Well, I think there's, there's, there's definitely a germ of an interesting idea there. I can certainly see the, the benefit in pulling it all together, but my big concern is the ongoing cost of this. So I'm, I'm going to invest a cautious 100K, but my personal view, I think, is a drop in the ocean to what it will cost you after it's live. Let's hear from Steve Delo. Well, Sir Hill, firstly, I thought you were very cool under fire with the difficult presentation there and the technology, so well done. You should give him a big round of applause for that. <laughs> Not easy. However, however, there are a lot of moving parts to this, and I'm concerned about a lot of things, how you're going to market it and the cost of that. The branding, the branding has got to be absolutely spot on. It's very risky, could work, but I think it's very risky. It will burn cash at the outset. And given it is risky, and given I'm an independent trustee by day and managing risks is what I'm all about, alas, I'm out. Thank you, Steve. Um, what about you, Darren? Yeah, I think for um, sheer perseverance, I'm definitely in. Um, I think there's, the, 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 there's, the, there's something in this. I think um, you know, I would counsel you to sort of pull back your ambition a bit and, and um, sort of take out some of that risk. But I think things like this are the future, so I'm in for 250k. And last but not least, the grumpiest of the dragons, Bill Galvin. 
<laughs> so, I'm going to give a hundred grand for, 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 for dealing with the PowerPoint. But, um, look, I mean, I, I, like I said, I think this is too big and too complex. I kind of echo Steve's concerns. I think the amount of effort that somebody would need to put in in set up an ongoing engagement with this is greater than the utility some people might get out of it. Um, so, the 100 grand for perseverance is all you get from me, I'm afraid. Thank you, Bill. A good result for Sahil, but there's still one more contestant hoping to impress our dragons. These are testing times in the economy, but that doesn't deter anyone here in the den. The dragons are on the search for the best savings ideas, but they are ruthless in their quest. And this has always been a forum for the fearless. The dragons are investing their cash, so don't be surprised if they are searching questions. How well will our final entrepreneur, Andrew Penny, answer them? Right, good afternoon, Dragons. Uh, my name is Andrew Penny, and that's jumped on a slide already, so we're in for fun here. Um, and I'm here to ask you for as much money as possible to help implement my plan. My plan is based on individual engagement, understanding, and ownership. And it draws on some of the positive things from the anti-smoking campaign, where smoking was taken from being glamorous, something your doctor would do, to the cold reality that smoking is bad for you and can actually kill you. So in the same way that smoking is damaging for your health, I want not saving for your retirement to be seriously damaging for your wealth. So what's our plan? Well, our plan, first of all, a complete and utter own goal from a branding perspective. I'm going to abolish the word pensions. And I'm going to replace it with the wealth plan. Because after all, everybody wants to be just a little bit wealthy. So what is a wealth plan? It's going to be compulsory. Everybody's going to have one. Everybody over 20, earning 10 grand a year or more in full-time employment, it's going to be delivered by qualified advisors. But I recognise that young people have other financial priorities, and I'm going to give them break clauses. Break clauses so they can access their plan for first house purchase, marriage, birth of a child, and divorce. I'm also going to make sure... <laughs> cover all basic. Also going to make sure that the wealth plan is front of mind. It's going to be in people's faces. So I'm going to communicate how people are progressing on their wealth plan with wage slip communications that they're going to have regular and compulsory reviews. So let's have a little look at a wealth plan. Now here's a wealth plan that I've done for a Wendy Taylor, a lovely young lady. And she's 24, currently earning 25,000 a year. And she's going to be buying a house in six years' time. See the yellow spike there? She's going to access her plan to pay for her deposit to buy her house. She's also looking to retire a year earlier than her normal retirement age. So we've factored all these things into her plan and worked out what percentage she needs to save every month to achieve that plan. Now, what we're then going to do is put all these plans on a central database and consolidate them all for everybody. And we're going to link those plans with payroll and make them accessible to employers, individuals, um, and so on and so forth, so everybody can see what's going on. And we're then going to send messages to people in their payroll statements. And what we're going to do is we're going to invest in some technology so you can have red payslips or amber payslips or green payslips. Green if you're on track, amber if you're close, nearly making it, and red if you're miles off track. So let's have a look at an example amber wage slip. So somebody who's nearly there, and what you can see on their wealth plan. OK, you can see how much they've got in the plan. They can see how much they're spending every month. And it tells them they're 92% of plan. But importantly, it tells them in pounds and pence how much more they need to put in to get to that green statement. Now, I also think we can um, create a bit of peer pressure here as well. So on green wage slips, we're going to have nice aspirational and motivational <laughs> images that people will want to have on their wage slips. They're going to have a comfortable and good retirement. However, for red wage slips, unfortunately, it's the cold reality of what they can expect in retirement and perhaps what they're looking forward to. A bit of a shock tactic, like the smoking kills you, we're going to get people saving more. Now, you'll please be pleased to know, Dragons, I have a letter, um, because uh, obviously we didn't know what was going to happen in the general election. And I spoke to all parties, and I've got cross-party support. <laughs> Um, from all the leaders. So the wealth plan has longevity. That's the really good thing. And they're all prepared to invest and they're all prepared to make it tax-free for the employer and the employee. So all in all, it's just a win-win. Um, so what do I want your money for today? Well, dragons, I need your money so I can recruit and train the advisors to deliver the wealth plans. I need your money to build this central database, to put in the software to link it to payroll departments and to source the red, amber, and green colored envelopes. I don't think that'll take too long, but we'll get there. Um, I also want a fund to provide technology grants for those smaller employers who can't afford to have the technology on site. I want the wealth plan to be available to everybody. And fundamentally, I want the wealth plan to be a not-for-profit business. 
Now, that doesn't mean to say I'm not going to repay you, Dragons. I'm quite <laughs> happy to pay you and repay you with some interest. But I kind of thought you might want to leave a slightly better legacy than reggae reggae sauce to the UK population. <laughs> so I'm kind of hoping you'll do it free gratis, but we shall see. So, the wealth plan. In summary, everyone wants to have a wealth plan. Everyone will know how much they have to pay into their wealth plan, and everyone will be aware of what corrective action they need to take to get on track with their wealth plan. And the wealth plan will be constantly reviewed and always front of mind to encourage that saving ethos to continue. So the wealth plan, delivering individual engagement, understanding, and ownership. And I welcome your easy questions and nothing too technical, if you don't mind, Dragons. Delivering 30 slides in under three minutes was all, always going to be difficult. I commend you, Andrew. Let's hear from Steve Delo first. Well, Andrew, plenty of energy there. I'm sure if anyone can make this fly, you would. But are we really aiming at the right industry? You've got some wonderful things here in terms of red, green and amber envelopes. But shouldn't we be more in the HR and reward space and be sending out appraisals in these sort of letters or pay rises so that everyone in the office knows how they're getting on? Oh, my God, him over there, he's got a red this time. And seriously, on this, this would depend very much on contacts. How good are your contacts in the industry? You've got Ros Altman round for dinner this weekend? Funny you should say that. Uh, <laughs> she was round yesterday, just before she got the appointment. I was advising on whether or not to take it, to be fair. Too shy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my contacts are pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd hope that I can draw on them. And I think you do touch on a point there, and perhaps it's not particularly PC to have the red, amber, green uh, wage slips flying around. But this is about peer pressure. This is about changing culture. And perhaps we could tweak those to perhaps nicer shades of magenta and uh, sky blue or something. But this is about getting the messages. Perhaps we do away with the envelopes because they are too PC and we just have the messages contained. You wouldn't show everybody your wage slip, so why show them the, your message? But let's get that message out there. Let's get people saving for their retirement. I cannot wait to hear what Darren Philp is going to ask. Oh, we were, we were past this letter. Um, look, looks a bit fake. <laughs> <laughs> But on, on, a, on a serious note, I think that you know, one of the key challenges with your red, amber, green um, system is won't the reality for most people be that they will be in the red category or the amber category and don't we really risk putting people off um, because there's just too big a mountain to climb? And, and that, that will be the skill of those people planning the wealth plans and they will have the skill and uh, the education, the awareness and the tools to be able to build a realistic plan. You can't build an unrealistic plan, we know that. So it has to be realistic with what some of these salaries are, what age they are, what position they're in. And so we will have a realistic plan. We're not going to have your red, you can never be anything but red unless you give us more than your salary. That's ridiculous. So it's finding that common ground and getting the right education, the right quality. We're creating jobs here. We're hoping these jobs are going to be filled by really high quality graduates. Um, so, so hopefully they'll have the intelligence and the wherewithal to, to help people on that journey. Maggie Williams. Well, I, I, I'd advise not too much stock on green envelopes. I think uh, Darren's got a point there. You're not going to need too many of those in the workforce at the moment. And I do echo his point about uh, the risk that that puts people off. But I think it, it's, an interesting, it's, it's an interesting idea. And I do think that kind of putting health warnings in place are a good one. But my question, and I know you've got a letter with remarkable support here, is that anything that's not profit, anything that sits within the the government boundary is subject to change, as we've seen in the past years. I mean, how, how legislation change-proof do you think this idea is? Well, there's an easy answer to that. I mean, I could make it not not-for-profit, and I'll have the profit. Does that, if that kind of helps, I'm, I'm happy to take the profit. Um, how, how do you suffer? <laughs> it's never easy, um, but I think what we're looking at here is something that's greater good. We all know there's a big problem here. We know there's a lot of resource focusing on it. Uh, we want to make this accessible to everyone, so there has to be a competitive price point. I want people to ac access wealth plans for less than £100 to build a wealth plan, to review a wealth plan. And that's tremendous value for money for something that's going to really shape somebody in how they save and encourage them to save and get a chance of actually a decent retirement or a decent wealth strategy for buying a house and so on and so forth. And last but absolutely not least, Bill Galvin. Well, Andrea, it's a compelling proposition to want to take our money and um, perhaps give it back to us. <laughs> um, but what I can understand, you want everybody in the workforce to have every decade a health check. And it could be more frequently. If they change job, 
If they exercise one of the life plans, it would be a compulsory review of the wealth plan. So, so, I mean, the government would love it. This is a job creation scheme, isn't it? Fantastic. I mean, this will yeah. solve the unemployment rate it's, as well as, uh, as, well as fringe the benefits problem. everywhere. How many, <laughs> how many people are you going to need to deliver this? Well, we've estimated that it's about 1,643 initially. <laughs> um, That's what I but, thought. But we, we, <laughs> we suspect that that number will be fairly stable at that level. And we, we plan to implement it in kind of a reverse staging auto enrollment type scenario whereby we take. We leave those schemes who are, are getting really high contributions and are in good DB schemes to the end. And it's those people not saving who get the wealth plan first and those on very low contribution levels. So hopefully that will get the right people saving quicker um, and making a quicker difference. Andrew Penny, thank you. Thank you. Fifth Dragon, for the last time this evening, it is time for you to vote. Small, medium, huge investment or absolutely nothing at all. You have 10 seconds. And now for the dragons. Are you going to invest? And if so, how much? Maggie Williams. Well, I've got £300,000 left. And Andrew, you can have it. <laughs> Steve Delo. Well, I think this is probably insanity, frankly. It all looks like it can never happen. <laughs> but I reckon you can sell ice to the Eskimos. It'll be a fun ride. <laughs> So, um, of my 300 left, you can have 200k. Bill Galvin. I think there's a thin line between altruism and foolishness. <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly where this is. Um, but look, it's not my money. So you can have, <laughs> you can have all I've got left because uh, it, it was a compelling pitch. <laughs> and finally, who haven't I asked yet? Darren Philp. Well, I come back to this letter. It's a, it's a fake letter, and to be asked to invest in something with the HMRC logo on it, it just doesn't work for me. So I won't give you any money, but you can have my fake notes. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, right, out back, there are some very helpful people doing some very helpful maths for us, and we're going to give them exactly 60 seconds to do that. So far this evening, we've had three ideas, one that looked at retirement health warnings, another one that looked at save as you spend, trying to tap into people's nicotine habits to help them get a better pension, and one that looked at a giant platform that's going to integrate everything from where and when you buy your milk to how you save for your pension. It, we will see in about 47 seconds which idea has won. In the meantime, I just wanted to say we are having drinks um, downstairs after this, is after this session is over. Please do join us there. That would be absolutely lovely. Also, if you've missed any sessions today and you want to catch up on the coverage, all of it will be online on www.pensions-insight.co.uk and www.engagedinvestor.co.uk. Also, please do join us tomorrow for what hopes to be a very thought-provoking day, not least with an addition to the lineup, Steve Webb, former pensions minister, who will give his take on what lies in store for his successor, Ros Altman, over the next five years. Right, the votes have been counted and the results are in. And in third place, with an investment of £300,000, is Sahil Sethi. In second place, with an investment of £750,000, is Lucy Ashton. In first place, possibly because the Dragons have lost their minds, is Andrew Petty with £1.3 million. Andrew, could you... Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for participating. Thank you to our dragons. And our contestants.